The Razorback football team gets a new commitment from a big-time quarterback for the 2023 class. Razorback baseball is playing UCA and Dickey Stevens Park in North Little Rock, but nobody's going to be able to watch it on TV and some other nonsense. This is the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. <laughs> Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am the host, John Neighbors. I am also your host of Out of Bounds. We can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday. Still battling this uh, allergy thing that I'm gonna have to like you know take uh, take uh, swigs of water during the podcast just to keep it going, but uh, it's getting better. It's getting better. It's almost getting there to the point to where I feel a little bit better about everything, and maybe I'll be able to talk because it sucks when you can't you actually like talk for a living and your voice isn't 100. So either way, uh, bear with me on that as uh, we're gonna power through here on the podcast today. And you know, there's a cute few things that have been going on, and specifically uh, with Arkansas football yesterday where they got a really big-time commitment out of Malachi Singleton, who is a quarterback out of Georgia. And I'm just going to kind of give you a little bit of a, a background on him, where it wasn't a surprise. I think a lot of people saw this coming when he was going to make his official announcement on Monday. Uh, but he's uh, he's got a unique build of 6'1", 225 pounds. And I say that's unique because if you think about it, like – KJ Jefferson's like 6'4, 240 pounds. You know, like he's he's a bigger bodied guy, but he's tall. But then you have Singleton, who's 6'1. This is a high school kid, mind you. He's 6'1, 225. You know, that's usually the size of what you would see a freshman linebacker being at. But this is a quarterback. So he's a he's a pretty big dude and very athletic to, to go along with it as well. But uh, he's he's a quarterback that chose Arkansas over a lot of different schools, Georgia being one of them. Uh, he ranks as the number 18 signal caller. Uh, and he's just uh, a guy that uh, apparently Kendall Bryles was really high on. And so it's kind of cool, too, because if you watch his video of his commitment, it's, it's actually something that if you're a Razorback fan, you're going to love him. And you're also going to love his dad. So if you're on YouTube, uh, check out this video because it's actually pretty entertaining when he committed to Arkansas. Uh, for the next three, four years, I'll be taking my talents to the University of Arkansas. Yeah. Okay, Suey, man. Yeah. So obviously it was a pretty cool thing for him when you know he talks about Woo Pigs too, and you see his dad giving the horns down as he's celebrating, uh, which is just you know again going to win over the hearts of so many Razorback fans. So a really cool little thing there that uh, had the commitment of Malachi yesterday. And listen, I know that uh, it's going to be a while before we even see him as a you know on 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 the roster, or even starting or anything like that. Uh, you kind of think that maybe if KJ has another big year this year, he moves on to go to the NFL, and there'll be some guys like, like you know, it could be Malik Hornsby, could be Malachi Singleton, could be some other options there to be whoever takes over after KJ Jefferson. And, you know, we never know what the Kendall Bryle situation would be. Like, all those things factored into it as far as kind of looking away ahead of the future. But I started thinking about this, where we have seen – Kendall Bryles at Arkansas put together a really good offense, an like offense that's efficient, an offense that's balanced, an offense that features uh, quality play from the quarterback position, whether it's Felipe Franks and, and Sam Pittman's first year or last year with K.J. Jefferson. Whatever it may be, the stats have always usually been pretty good for Arkansas and for Arkansas quarterbacks in the offense under Kendall Bryles. And – I think that that's kind of really indicative of the roster that's being built and also the playmakers that Arkansas has in place to be able to help out there as well. But here's the thing that I thought was kind of interesting from this perspective of with Kendall Browse being at Arkansas. 
I'm going to go ahead and play the assuming game, which I know assuming, you know, we know what it can do. But I'm going to go ahead and play the assuming game and say that Kendall Bryles is here at Arkansas as the offense coordinator for a, for another two years. We'll just say that. Let's just play that game. Two years after this season. So three, the next three seasons, Kendall Bryles is at Arkansas. I don't know if that's the case, but it would be nice. But we'll do that. You know, since being at Arkansas, the quarterbacks that Kendall Bryles has had have not been quarterbacks that he has recruited specifically for his system. In fact, this coaching staff and the guys that they brought in at quarterback and their starting quarterbacks were not ones that they personally recruited to come in and be the guy. Now, that is not saying at all or any sort of slight towards K.J. Jefferson or even Felipe Franks. Like, that's not saying that they're not good quarterbacks. I'm not saying that at all. But I do know that there's always going to be an element of offensive coordinators who are quarterback coaches as well that want to bring in their own guys to see how they perform in the offense that they see. And so when Felipe Franks came in, he was more of a quarterback that just, holy crap, we need somebody just to help. <laughs> we got a roster that's really beaten down with a bunch of guys that haven't won anything that need leadership desperately. So let's get a guy who has SEC experience to come in and help us with this offense. And that's what Felipe Franks did. And he did a great job of it. I mean, he was a really good quarterback. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think he's going to be remembered as any record holders at Arkansas, but he did. He was exactly who Arkansas needed in that situation to be uh, a team that won a few SEC games back in 2020. And then K.J. Jefferson comes in, and we know that he was recruited by Chad Morris and that staff. And Sam Pittman, if you listen to the interview that we had with him on the podcast just uh, you know last week, he even said that when he's talking about K.J. Jefferson, we, you know, we thought about maybe going to the portal until we saw him in that Missouri game. And after that Missouri game ended, we're like, he's our guy. We're not, we don't need any more quarterbacks. This is the guy we're rolling with. And again, that's great. That's awesome. But again, it's there's an element to it to where it's like those are the guys that they put in and that are working well, but what about the guys that they want to personally select? Like the guy that Kendall Bryle sees is like, this dude in my offense will ball out. That's what I'm kind of thinking about what, what a Malachi Singleton could do, could be that type of player. Because we know the Kendall Bryle's offense has been really good, but what happens when they get a guy in there that's Kendall wants, that Kendall picks, that Kendall goes after and personally recruits heavily because he sees the type of elements that he can bring to that offense and being an extremely dynamic player. What happens then? Like, that's the thing that kind of makes me think of the endless possibilities of what this offense could be as long as Kendall Bryles remains the offensive coordinator, which again, I don't know if how long he's going to stay here. I don't know how long he wants to be here. I don't know if he wants to be a head coach quick, fast, and in a hurry. Or maybe he's perfectly content being an offensive coordinator. I don't know. I don't know any of those things. But what I do know is that if it was up to Sam Pittman, he would keep Kendall Bryles here for as long as possible. And as long as he is doing that, I think that you're going to see an offense that's going to be effective in the long term. Like Arkansas's offense last year averaged about five touchdowns a game. They averaged about 35 points a game. That's pretty incredible. They had 20, over 2,500 yards passing and 2,500 yards rushing. That's balanced and efficient. And if you look at the turnovers and the turnover margin, Arkansas, it they, they were one of the best teams in the SEC when it came to limiting their turnovers as well. So like all those factors just coming into it makes you understand that this offense is built to be great in this conference always as long as you have a great quarterback to go along with it. And K.J. Jefferson is that. K.J. Jefferson has proven that. K.J. Jefferson has proven that he is the dude. And I'm hoping to continue to see him to grow into this next season and be extremely efficient in many different ways and improve upon his game this past season. I expect that. But, you know, there's always going to be an element of what happens when it becomes your guy. What happens when K.J. Jefferson moves on? Which he will. And I hope it's after this year, because if he moves on after this year, that means that he had a really great year. That's what I hope for. But what happens when KJ leaves? Well, 
Kendall Browns is then going to have a decision on his hands. He's going to be able to have a true, legitimate quarterback competition with true, legitimate guys that he himself selected to be on this roster. That's what I look for. And if you watch the highlights of this Malachi Singleton guy, you can see that there's a really great element of athleticism. I mean, 6'1", 225, that's a big dude. That's a big dude for a quarterback, especially at, 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 his, at his height. And I'm sure people are going to say, well, I don't know about having small quarterbacks. Folks, the, the days of having big quarterbacks are over. Like, yeah, if you get a K.J. Jefferson-sized dude, that's great. You know what I mean? Look at, look at Heisman Trophy winners. You know, look at look at guys like Bryce Young. Look at guys like Baker Mayfield. Look at guys like Kyler Murray. Those aren't big dudes. They're just really great athletes who have put up great numbers and have great success with the players around them. So, you know, going out and saying, well, we need a quarterback that's 6'4". No, you can do it just fine with 6'1". Many teams do, and especially with the offense that Kendall Burrells tries to run. So I think that's going to be a great thing for Arkansas. I can't wait to see when this guy gets on campus and hopefully, uh, you know, he's a, he goes along with the with what's the uh, expectation to go along with him too. But, you know, I just think that that's one of those things where, man, if you're a Razorback fan, you got to be excited about uh, the – the uh, opportunities that when KJ Jefferson continues on and moves on with his career into the NFL, you're going to have some really good things to uh, to look forward to as well, folks. So you, I got to tell you about Athletic Greens, and I know that we're all trying to stay healthy, and it, it sometimes is a lot easier said than done, especially when it comes to your energy, to your immune system, to to all those things. Like we get older, we try to take care of ourselves. There's so many pills to take and vitamins and you don't know what works and you don't know what you need or anything like that. But luckily, Athletic Greens is going to help you out, especially when it comes to more energy, better gut health and building up that immune system. And essentially, all that it is, is that it is a very simple powder that you put into water and you drink it. It's great. It makes it easy because a lot of people don't like to go through all the problems when it comes to the pill taking and taking up to and taking advantage of it and all those things. It, it's it's really crazy. But the thing is, is that when you look at it, it's it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto or paleo or vegan or whatever it is, and it helps you with those diets and everything. And a ton of people who like to take those multivitamins, you want to choose the best ones. And that's what Athletic Greens is able to do for you as well. And they have over 7,000 five-star reviews. So if you're one of those people that say, okay, what kind of, how many people are actually believing this? What is this thing? 7,000 five-star reviews. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, and that's why I'm asking every one of you to try this out. It's right now you need to take advantage of it. It's one scoop of water every day, and that's it. No need for all these different things to take care of. Just one scoop, put in water every single day. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one year free supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so we know that Arkansas is playing a baseball game tonight, and it's against an in-state opponent that they've already faced before, and it is UCA. And, you know, these we've talked about this as being a cool thing and always playing games and uh, against in-state opponents and especially in baseball and everything like that. It's really great. But the difference between those other games and this game tonight is that Arkansas is actually playing in Dickie Stevens Park here in North Little Rock. And so that's always a cool thing because they, they sell it out. It's always packed out. It's, it's, a, it's an awesome thing that I know a lot of Razorback fans enjoy and seeing. But the thing continues to pop up just like it does in basketball and it does in baseball when there's games played here in Little Rock is that there's no telecast. There's no streaming. If you want to watch the game on TV, you cannot. You can listen to the radio or you can go to the game. But those are the only things that you can feel like or think about or even have anything to do with following the game. I guess you could follow it on social media with people posting about it and all that. But that's just the case. Now, this is the only Arkansas game that won't be available for television or on the internet through live streaming. 
And just to kind of give an explanation for this, the game was not selected to be televised on any of the NCC network pa partners, but because it fall, but because it falls within the NCC network light rights, it's not eligible to be broadcasted by any other third party. It says Arkansas spent $7 million before the SEC networks launch in 2014 to provide television capabilities on all of its sports venues to a studio and control room built in Bud Walton arena. But according to an athletics department budget report, and Arkansas does not have the capability to independently produce a television broadcast from North Little Rock, according to the officials. So essentially what it is, is that the U of A is set up on campus, on all their venues, to have the satellites be able to take the broadcast from there, put it on the SEC network and make it work, which is very expensive, as you can see, for $7 million. But Arkansas is not going to pay that astronomical amount of money to have the broadcasting set up in Little Rock at whether it's Simmons Bank Arena or Dickie Stevens Park for one game per year. And the SEC is not going to pay for it either. So you essentially you just have this. And then the SEC still owns the rights. So they're not going to give up those rights to let KATV or PHV 11 or whoever play those games here on the live broadcast too. So essentially you're just kind of screwed out with it. So, and that's, and I get that question a lot. I know a lot of people are wondering, like, why is that always the case? Why does it always happen that way? But to me, that's, that's kind of what it comes down to. It's, it's a something, something as simple as that is. It comes down to that, which uh, is so weird. But either way, uh, that's, that's kind of the explanation that we'll always get. And, and you know, at Dickey Stevens Park is still a cr really cool place. It's fit 7,200 people, I think. And it's still a cool place to watch a baseball game and all that. People have been like wondering about this and uh, come on, I hate to use the word complaining, but there has been some complaints about it too, because of the not being able to watch the game and all that. Um, I get that. Like I get, it's kind of frustrating. It's almost showing the, how spoiled we are to where we get so used to watching every single game anytime we want. And then when we have this one game that we can't, we're like, well, what the crap, what are we supposed to do here? You know, it's, it's it's just something to where it's almost like you got to make that sacrifice. I think the game being played in Dickie Stevens Park is really cool. I think uh, games being played in Simmons Bank Arena for basketball is really cool. But it's also something that you don't want to have too often because of the lack of television rights, but you also don't want uh, to spend the money to uh, go down there and try to have the television on there. for It's because it's very, very, very expensive, um, which – Luckily, War Memorial still has that capability. Could you, could you imagine what it would be like if you couldn't watch Razorback football games at War Memorial on TV? Like then, goodness, and like the the games would move out of there quicker than anything. But, uh, anyways, it's that's kind of the explanation because I know people ask about it. And again, it, it's if you haven't been to which I haven't been, but I've heard that if you go to a game at Dickie Stevens Park when the Razorbacks are there, it's awesome. It's packed out. Razorback fans really show up. They do the same at Simmons Bank Arena, which uh, <clears throat> hasn't been very good to Arkansas over the past few years. It seems like they always struggle to win games there. But um, that's neither here nor there. I don't want to start that debate or go down that road or anything like that. But it just again, shows you how blessed we are to be able to watch all these games and to, to be able to see them and uh, no matter when they play or whoever they play. And when it doesn't happen, we're kind of like up in arms about it too. But either way. Uh, listen to the radio, though. Listen to Phil Elson right here, 1037 The Buzz on the broadcast. Just check it out there. Besides Phil and Bubba, they're better than any of those other commentators on ESPN or SEC Network, either, especially those AM ones. Lord, were they terrible. Those were the worst. You know, I don't need to go down that road. But then you talk about some homerific. And I know I'm a homer. Like if I was calling a game on the SEC Network for Arkansas, I would definitely be a homer. But there's a reason why I don't do it because I'd be a homer. Those guys were terrible. So, yeah, listen to Phil and Bubba. Check out 1037 The Buzz. That's where you need to listen to the games and find out more. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all betting stats and info. Uh, find all of the sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of Major League Baseball this next season. It's your continued source at BetOnline.net for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs to esports and so much more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions over at betonline.net where the game starts. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, 
I, I wanted to use it for some nonsense because there's sometimes there's some like topical stuff that comes up and that like it's kind of fun to talk about or it's fun to dive into with because everybody's talking about it and everything. And I just thought it was so funny that uh, for those of you who know, like me, and I have a I, I like to have be present on Twitter. You know, it, it's it's kind of the app that I choose of social media preferences. Uh, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. But like Twitter's kind of my thing. I like Twitter. Uh, it's, it's good for what we do too in sports content and keeping up to date with all the information. But we know that yesterday, uh, it was officially announced that pretty much Elon Musk of Tesla, the CEO has bought Twitter and is going to be owning Twitter and turning it into a private company, bought it for like $44 billion or whatever it was. And it cracked me up because so many people were like upset and like angry and all those things too. And I'm not trying to get like political or anything like that. But I don't know. I've always felt like for what I've used Twitter for and what I think like a lot of you use Twitter for, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to do anything differently. In fact, it may make it a lot better because I think that, you know, if you have somebody in place that's uh, always, uh, you know, somebody who's you know big on, which I'm, you know, a free speech advocate. I think free speech is important no matter what. I think that, uh, you know, Twitter has kind of been something that's caused problems when it comes to spam bots and uh, you know, issues of algorithms and like all that stuff. And I just think it's going to be a kind of a cool thing to see what's in store with Elon Musk to say what you want about the guy, but the guy's really good at what he does. He's very smart, very intelligent, and he's going to change things. So I don't think my experience is going to change at all, but you know, it's kind of one of those things that you think about, like if people like just could, I wish I, like, I could imagine just waking up one day and I'm sure he didn't do it this way, but you know, just waking up one day, I'm like, I'm buy Twitter. I got money. I'm gonna buy Twitter and see how it goes. Um, you know, and then just go along with it. But I can tell you that, like, just for me, I love the fact that for this podcast, especially, you know, what we've been able to do for me as social media with the podcast and helping it grow. I mean, it's one of the biggest advocates for it. And that's why I love being on Twitter so much is because I think like, I feel like there's so many people that are on there that would listen to this podcast, would watch this podcast or whatnot to be able to, you know, grow it from that perspective because if i was just on youtube and didn't have any social media presence i don't know if it would grow at all and especially with my radio show too it's like kind of good to intertwine both of them and to to make it all work there as well so but anyways it's kind of a cool thing i can't wait to see what's in store for it and i think that there's always room to improve things especially with our social media uh deals and you know making everyone a little bit healthier and mentally especially and everything going along with it too now, don't get in the comments and start saying you're, you know, you're mad at me or you know, I'm being political or anything because I'm not. I'm not trying to be. I'm just saying that that's like something that was on people's minds every day. I was like, I can't. I'm excited about it. I always, I like Twitter. I like doing Twitter for what we do. I think it's great for getting the latest information on stuff to be able to talk about for content here on the podcast. And so I will not be leaving Twitter. I'm not going to have an issue with Twitter or what I use for Twitter for, which is pretty much Razorback Twitter, which could be. It can be pretty insane sometimes. Uh, it's perfect for what I do too, so I enjoy it as well. But either way, appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.